Hey guys, welcome back for our Porsche restoration project. In this video, we're going to take a break from working on the front of the car and uh, go ahead and move on into the interior and take a look at some of the sound deadening. Also, uh, our headliner uh, is finished up now. We'll go ahead and look uh, up close and see how it details out uh, coming down into the body. And then also we've got a little bit of upholstery work we're starting to apply to our pillars. Um, but first I think what we'll do, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at this sound deadening here. I'm using Dynamat and Dynaliner, um, three different thicknesses to do the interior of this car, and also a couple different layers in specific areas. So you can see some of it's already applied. I think what I'll do, um, I'm going to go ahead and take you into the shop, show you some of the templates I'm making to apply this stuff. Uh, fairly simple to apply. Although uh, it doesn't really like extremely hot weather to go down, it's a little bit more sensitive and you gotta be a lot more careful with it. Uh, but let's go inside the shop. We're gonna take a look at those templates, see how I'm making those. Um, and then we'll come out here, make a template and uh, show you how I'm applying it and rolling it out. All right, out here on the shop floor, uh, lighting conditions not so great, but we'll go ahead and uh, do the best we can with what we're working with here. So what we're looking at is the uh, rear engine compartment section template form and also uh, driver's side templates here you can see uh, what I've done is I've taped uh, aluminum foil together in sections and then pressed it in to the shapes and configurations of what we need to make up in the dynamat. I'm sure if you check around on YouTube you'll be able to find some real good quality content on how to install this stuff professionally. Um, I've done this a few times. Uh, this is just the techniques that I use. I'm not sure that this is the mainstream way to do it. Um, however, it is one way and uh, it, is, it is helpful in the fact that you won't have a lot of waste with it. Also, once you're making up your templates, uh, old carpenter trick, um, if you work from the biggest piece down to the smallest piece, you'll get the most amount of mileage out of your material. Um, you can see some of the uh, tailings of our templates after we've cut them out is what your uh, dynamat will look like after it's cut. And then this is the uh, sheet form that it comes in. I've got a couple different sizes here I'm working with, uh, 18 by 32 and 12 by 36. So let's just take a close-up look here at the uh, rear engine compartment pattern and uh, see what I'm doing here to make this one fit. So what I've done, um, I've just gone ahead and pressed aluminum foil into that whole area. And then once I've got everything uh, seated, uh, I followed it up with a sharpie so that I could cut it out with some scissors. You can see the sharpie mark on there. And then also these uh, squares cut out here. Um, these are certain protrusions coming out um, on the areas that uh, you won't be able to stick the dynamat down. So uh, real important to cut those areas out and uh, be able to apply it in one fell swoop. Uh, the one thing about the dynamat, once you start laying it down, it's not forgiving. Uh, you're going to have to be real accurate on your template and uh, real precise in laying it down. So once we have our template, then we go ahead and lay this up on top. You can see uh, this is my dyna liner. This is going to go on top of the existing uh, dynamat that I've already put down, and that'll build us up the correct thickness and have a real good quality uh, sound deadening with the two layers on there. So what I do is I just take my, my template and, and uh, lay it down over the material press it out and then uh, once uh, once I've got it ironed out on top of my flat piece I go ahead and trace it with a sharpie and cut it out. Alright so there's a bird's eye view of our templates and uh, how they're going to work. So let's go ahead and head out to the car. We'll go ahead and uh, build up our passenger side footwell template, uh, mark it off, cut it and see what's involved. Okay back out here at the car. Uh, booth temperature right now is about 100 degrees so we're uh, middle of the summer in Las Vegas, extremely hot to do anything out here on the car. However, uh, no problem to safely get through this template at this temperature. However, we won't be able to put any dynamat down at 100 degrees. Uh, very, very risky and uh, it can end up damaging uh, quite a bit of the dynamat. So what happens is it gets too, too supple, too sticky. Uh, if you accidentally touch the adhesive side to the metal, try to pull it off, it'll stick so hard you'll just destroy it to get it off of there. So uh, really likes between 70 and 80 degrees uh, for the best temperatures to work with. Um, however, let's go ahead and uh, do our template here. So what I'm using, I'm just using a regular uh, Reynolds wrap 
aluminum foil. Get this at the grocery store. Pull it off a little bit longer than we need. Have this laying this in the area. Get that in there. And then just pressing it in with my fingernail, making sure everything is seated. I'll bring the camera in here uh, nice and close so you can see what's going on up close, see how it fits, and how we're going to trace it out with the Sharpie. Um, not too bad to make one of these. Take maybe 10, 15 minutes and uh, a couple hours to put the dynamite down. Okay, so then uh, to get started, we just want to basically lay out the, uh, the template in the whole area we're going to be cutting. And you can see up into the areas, I've got it tucked in with my fingernail here. Uh, this is where we're going to be cutting and tracing our pattern uh, to our Dynamap. So as long as everything is tight where it needs to be, we um, should end up with a pretty good template. So uh, let me go ahead and seam together our joints with some masking tape. Uh, then we'll take a look at it and follow it up with a Sharpie. Okay, so we've got our uh, joints all taped together there. Um, and so one thing you want to really be checking for here, once you get your joints seamed together, you want to make sure that everything is really pressed down and you have full uh, embossment on your template. Um, and that's pretty much going to replicate whatever's going on with the uh, aluminum foil on the Dynamat. So it's going to stretch and conform also to these same contours. If you're not stretched out, uh, then when you go to uh, iron out your Dynamat, what's going to happen, your piece is going to end up uh, too small. So make sure you got plenty of uh, embossing showing through there, and uh, that'll make a nice fit. Okay, let's get the Sharpie and trace that out. All right, and then take our Sharpie, stick it right down in our pocket there, where everything's been traced out with our fingernails. Basically we're just going to go all the way around. Even in these areas here. We're going to get right back in there. Alright, and then follow on our Sharpie line around. You can see we've got a nice clean pattern now. We can just cut that out with a pair of scissors and we'll be good to go. So this principle here, this is going to work from your smallest piece to your largest piece, uh, no matter what you want to do with your dyno liner, dynamat, uh, this is going to get you through pretty much anything. Okay, so we got our ironed out on the floor now, so what we're going to do, we're just going to take a pair of scissors and follow our Sharpie line all the way around, just uh, gently cutting it out. And then once we have it cut out, we're uh, ready to overlay it on our dynamat and cut a perfect pattern. Alright, so there's our uh, finished pattern all cut out. So all we got to do is follow that and we should be in really good shape. Okay, so nice and cool out here this morning. So what I've got is three pieces of 18 by 32s taped together. And uh, that size seems to work best for our footwell uh, area. And then uh, I'm paying particular attention to when I, when I tape my edges together that my seams are where they need to be distance-wise. Right on the money. Make sure we got uh, both pieces touching there. And then I have my aluminum foil. It's just tacked down uh, so we can trace it with our Sharpie. And then a small scrap piece added on to the rear there just to make up our length. Okay, so there's, uh, there's what she looks like. Let me go ahead and trace that out with a Sharpie, and then we'll cut her out. All right, so we got her all traced off there. Let's see what that looks like. Um, even though we got black on black with our Sharpie, uh, get a nice little indent with it as we uh, pull along there, and uh, you can see quite easy to follow. You'll definitely need a uh, new utility knife blade to do the cutting here, and uh, the moment it gets dull, you'll have to switch it out, probably go through several blades to get everything cut. Just uh, pushing down hard enough to get through both layers and uh, pulling motion only. All right, and then after we're cut, just go ahead and peel it apart.
So there she is all cut out. You can see it's really not too bad cutting on that. Um, one utility knife blade to get through that to complete. Um, so the next time we do any cutting, we're going to have to put a new blade in there. All right, let's take it outside and put her in. So here we are just sitting down in the footwell here. You can see looks like our template is going to work out just fine for us. Uh, so we're going to start with the front there. We're going to stick that down and work from the front, slowly working our way to the back. All right, and then gently setting her down in there. Got her backing pulled off. You can see it really wants to stick once we get started. Just gently kind of getting in the location. I think that's going to do it. So then we're going to just start pressing down the front edge, get that seated in where it needs to be. Do that by hand. And then massaging any air bubbles out, working towards the rear. Conforming down into our shapes here. And then we're trying to account for all the shapes that are in there. We just want to work real slow, uh, real time-consuming part here. But you got to make sure that you're not trapping too much air in there. Although we can get some of it out if we trap one air bubble in there. It's best just to get it as tight as we can before we have to make any cuts in there. Okay, and then uh, the type of roller I'm using here. This is a wooden roller. Uh, I bought this long time ago with another kit of Dynamat I used, but uh, this is what you're going to need. And then basically just rolling it out, uh, following the same pattern, working from the front to back. And really press it down. And also, you're going to get some wrinkling in here. Uh, it's all part of it has wrinkles in it when you pull it out of the box. Um, main thing is just basically you just want to get seated and get your embossing correct no matter what it looks like because we're going to be going uh, right over the top of it with contact cement and carpet in most areas. We won't be contacting over this area with our with our uh, with our carpet but uh, up in these areas uh, a lot of this will be contact cemented. And then right here you can see we've got uh, a little bit of an air bubble trapped in there. So one way you can get rid of those, just put a little bit of a cut in there. And then just roll it out. I like uh, all my Dynamat to fit as tight as possible. Better than having air pockets. Okay, that's what it should look like all rolled out. And then just finishing her off. All right, well that kind of gives you some kind of idea what's involved in making templates and getting everything ironed out. That principle really is the same for pretty much everything in the car. Um, smaller the template, the easier things are going to go. The bigger the template, the more difficult it is and the more stretched out everything is. So when in doubt, you just make it one, one little piece at a time and just splice back into it. So I think what I'm going to do from here, um, let me go ahead and template the rest of this car, uh, get everything ironed out and detailed out, and then we'll come back in here and take a look at it. And I can point out a couple of, uh, of the important areas you want to be mindful of. Also, I want to take a couple days here and see if I can tune this booth up 
you get some kind of air conditioning out here as uh, summertime's getting really hot. Okay, so we got everything pretty much put down now. I got one last piece here I need to roll out. Uh, before I stick this down, I just want to show you, uh, or try to show you, what this sounds like uh, before and after applying the sound deadening. So, get kind of a tinny, little hollowy sound. I don't know if you can hear that. My terrible microphone. You see, it's quite a quite a thud now. So that stuff really works. Take the vibration right out of there. Okay, let me go ahead and stick this last piece down, then we'll go ahead and look everything over for uh, up close detail. All right, thank goodness that's over with. This whole uh, process, about six days to get through everything you're looking at here complete. Uh, very, very time consuming and really, really tedious work. Also, while you're working with it, you're going to have to pull out certain parts of your carpet kit and uh, double check how it's going to overlay onto your dynamat if you choose to do your dynamat on the pan, although originally it had no sound deadening in the pan area. I just think uh, it's a really good quality product and should give us a real nice interior cabin sound deadening uh, with that applied to the pan. Also, uh, really toughen it up too. Very, very uh, tough stuff. So we got to look out for uh, uh, over applying this. So if we, we came down the tunnel there, we could run into some issues uh, with our carpet overlapping. Um, getting into some buildups here, all kinds of different elevations. But really in this area here, it's just best to leave it off. Um, our cover here, I've gone ahead and done both sides. You can probably get a little bit of sound transfer there, uh, a little vibrational sound transfer through the tunnel. And then another detail we want to be looking out for while we're laying this stuff down, I'm using an awl. Uh, so when we make our templates up, uh, in some of these areas we're going to need to find our screws. So you can emboss those when we're making our aluminum templates, punch a hole through it with your Sharpie. And then uh, once you transfer it to your Dynamat, you can run this all through uh, the Dynamat, open it up really big. And that will also help you locate it once you're putting it back in place. And then coming down the sides here where your seat rail extensions are going to be with the seat rails, um, you'll want to use your carpet as a template to make sure uh, we're keeping our Dynamat far enough back that it doesn't pop through our carpet and show uh, some of this paintwork will actually be exposed. And then just a quick look under the front here just to see how it all details out. And then our driver's side. And then our rear seating area. This area here, really, really tough to template and uh, get it rolled out. Um, originally, they had uh, a piece of sound deadening over the, the tunnel hump here and running down our sides, and that's really all they had on there. And then on our uh, rear sides here, I'm just using a quarter inch Dyna liner. And that's about the right thickness you want to use for our sides here. It needs a little bit of a buildup in there. And originally they had like a, um, almost like a batting or some kind of a matting underneath the uh, upholstered panels left and right. On this side here. And that applies just the same way. And then also uh, I've gone ahead and stuck down our engine cover uh, final thickness on there, Dyna liner. And that also is quarter inch on top of a standard Dynamat, and that's going to give us the right buildup for our rear deck. All right, so let's move on to our headliner and see how that finishes off and uh, comes down into our body. Also, how it integrates with our sound deadening. Um, so I've got some new hold down strips. These were made up by our friends over at Autos International. Here's my originals, um, and I'm just using the originals for locating the original nail hole pattern. And uh, you definitely want to save these because if you don't have that pattern, it's going to be real, real difficult to gauge uh, where to put your fasteners back in there. However, if you do have it, you can transfer that pattern to your hold downs, and uh, that's going to work out really, really good. That just stretches out and holds down. Those are some spiral nails in there. Um, once everything's secure, then you can go ahead and uh, locate your screw holes, and you want to punch through there with an awl to make sure your screws all the way around are going to work out. And then looking at our driver's side here, you can see for detail how everything is overlaying and how much space you'll need. Also, had a couple of indents here from the factory 
uh, as they were trying to punch in the nails and didn't quite make it through. So there were two holes there with two dents, uh, but no fasteners. So uh, a regular sheet metal screw should help you out there if you're missing your nails. And that's how all this is going to overlap. Um, and we're going to get more into the upholstery part of it uh, on a different video. But for now, you can kind of see how everything ends and overlays. And then a detailed look at our defroster tubes, how they come up through there. There's a grommet through the body there. And they just clip onto the outside of the window. And then come through to our heater tubes and uh, tie off. And then some new hooks and also a uh, little upholstery work coming down our post here. Um, we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail on next video, but uh, at this point you'll want to get these in location. And then looking at the front of the headliner, also locating our screws in the uh, sun visor and rear view mirror. Real important also to get these screws located before we put the windshield in and rear window, uh, because if we have an accident trying to find something, poke a hole in the wrong spot, uh, or something doesn't work out with the headliner after we've installed the windows um, then what's going to happen you're going to have to pull the windows back out and reinstall a new headliner so now would be a really good time to locate everything okay guys so I think that's pretty much going to do it for our sound deadening and headliner details uh, one last thing I wanted to do here before we wrap up today um, I just wanted to finish up going over the installation on our uh, front hood seal here and how that sticks down uh, a couple of things to look out for we didn't quite have time On our last video. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how that finishes up So before we stick our hood seal down, I just want to show you this toolkit that I picked up from Titan here a uh, nice miscellaneous set of plastic tools and these are going to come in real handy for sticking down anything uh, from rubber molding to upholstery work, anything that needs a, a real delicate touch, you need something strong to work with, but it's not going to actually damage your material. Real nice quality kit and uh, all kinds of shapes, patterns, and configurations to work with. So picking up where we left off from our last video, uh, talking about this hood seal here. So what I've done is just press down the seal into the front part of the cowl here, not using any glue as it's so tight to get that in there. If you put some glue on there, uh, you could probably get yourself into trouble and uh, wouldn't be able to locate it exactly where it needs to go. So I'm using my uh, plastic tool from Titan. And what I'm doing is I'm just sticking it down in the groove and just working it. Just working that edge all along, pressing it down in there, making sure it's really seated. So once our center is seated and uh, we're balanced left and right, uh, equal distances there, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and prepare our uh, painted surface there. We want to take that slick shine off of there uh, using a fine scotch bright, Just slightly uh, scratch it up there. That way we get good adhesion with our contact cement. Let's go ahead and do that and see what that looks like. So I've just cut a small sliver of our uh, fine scotch bright, and all I'm trying to do is just take that shine off of there. Just work it up and down real carefully there. It's enough to get that shine off of there. So looking at the end of our seal here, you can take a look at the profile on this. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to put contact cement on the bottom side of the seal and the top side of our body here. I don't want to put any contact cement on this edge or this, this edge here. So the technique to install it is going to be to put it on the side and then drop down to stick it right here. So we need this area to slip and this area to stick. Just putting a little bit on at a time and staying away from the side. So we got both surfaces coated. Uh, give that about 10 minutes to dry. Staying away from that side edge there best we can and then our rubber seal also staying away from the outer edges just putting a little bit on the middle there all we need to do really is just make contact we really don't need a hundred percent glue surface area 
Okay, ready to go here. Uh, one last thing here. I had a, some kind of video editing problem. Uh, for some reason, I can't find that clip. Um, what I wanted to show you is right after we uh, scratch this up with a scotch bright, I'm going to take a damp paper towel and run down and make sure you pick up all that debris uh, with a damp paper towel. If we blow it off, we can end up with debris on the paint and potentially scratch. And then after you get it in location, you can go ahead and just kind of massage in there. Make sure she's pressed down in there. And that's pretty much what it should look like from the outside. And uh, probably protruding just a little bit on this side, which is okay. Uh, what's going to happen when we put our ceiling strip in there for our fender, that'll all compress. And then on this side here, we got that lip just hanging over the edge. A real nice seal and how it works. So what happens is water comes down the cowl here. It's collected in that groove. It works its way to the side here and then channels out the front. And uh, this way, uh, no way any water can penetrate the trunk area. And then our front seal, the same principle. So any water that's collected up in this area here will drain out towards the front of the car. All right, so that's gonna do it for our hood seal. Also, uh, while I was making this video, I uh, took a little time off and added a little bit extra insulation in here. Some new foam, uh, aluminum foil, blocking off our sunlight coming in. Cool things down here a little bit. And also installed a real nice air conditioning unit. Now we can press on through the summer. Don't have to worry about the heat and get this thing done. Well, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.